Thanks for tuning in to leftcoastnews.net, news and information from the wacky, sometimes communist, liberal west coast of the United States. For more, visit leftcoastnews.net. Well, Sideshow Bob is ramping up his bid for governor. He uh, is trying to make a bunch of claims about how serious he is about public safety. And from his own website, Bob Ferguson has a powerful record pursuing justice for victims improving community safety, and holding violent criminals accountable. Bob also advanced smart criminal justice reforms, ah, such as eliminating the rape kit backlog, okay, I'll give him that one. Banning solitary confinement for youth, oh, that, that's a good one, in detention and helping to improve and expand law enforcement training. <clears throat> I mean, seriously, dude? He expects us to buy this crap? Bob has a comprehensive plan to improve community safety in Washington through the following strategies. Increase the number of well-trained police officers and state troopers. Well, let's talk about why we're so low on well-trained police officers and state troopers. Number one, you've led a com campaign against cops for the last three years, trying to prosecute, making it easier to sue cops, making it easier to fire cops, forcing, helping Inslee force cops who didn't want to take the vaccine to take it or be fired. You, Bob, are one of the main reasons so many cops left the force and why all these cities are so low on cops. But now you want to increase the number. How are you going to get them to come back, Bob? Oh, they're going to get the little police officers who fall in line with the governor and Bob. <clears throat> I guess Bob hopes he would be the governor, in which case... The people that would fall in line with him, but really it's just a continuation of Jay Inslee. Use the resources Bob recovered from opioid companies that fueled the epidemic to implement a fentanyl crisis response plan. Well, let's talk about the drug problem we have in Washington, Bob. Again, you and Jay Inslee have fueled this whole homeless and drug crisis that we face. You have legalized drugs. You have made it impossible to prosecute people for drugs. You have tied law enforcement's hand. You have tied prosecutors' hands. On top of this, you don't want to incarcerate these people. <clears throat> Nothing else seems to work. You've made open drug use on the streets legal. In addition to the hundreds of police officers that left the force because of you and Inslee. We also have shortages in jail staffing all across the state. Almost every single jail I am aware of on the west side of Washington, for sure, is short-staffed. And they're all under booking restrictions. They don't book warrants. They don't book misdemeanors. Some of them don't even book felonies. What are you going to do about that, Bob? Oh, number three, combat gun violence and mass shootings. I'll tell you how Bob's going to address that by taking more of your gun rights away. All you law-abiding, tax-paying citizens who aren't the ones out committing the gun crimes. No, that would be the gang members, the criminals the ones he doesn't want to prosecute, the ones he doesn't want to charge, the ones he doesn't want to put in jail. <clears throat> Pursue and arrest at-large offenders with active arrest warrants for violating the terms of their parole. 
individuals who are too often falling through the system's cracks. Well, that's true, Bob. They are. Because of you and Inslee's policies and all these Democrat wackos that sit on city councils in these big cities, you, again, won't prosecute, won't incarcerate. Now you're saying you will, but like I just said, the jails are short-staffed. So you won't be able to go out and arrest people with these warrants and book them because there's not enough staff to manage them. So that will not happen. Because you're never going to get these positions filled, Bob. Equip law enforcement with improved technology and data and invest in proven youth intervention strategies. What proven youth intervention strategies? We have an explosion of youth crime in this state. Why? Because you don't want to prosecute the youth. Places like King County, they don't want to even incarcerate youth, even for murder. But somehow, improve technology and data. You need people on the streets doing the actual work, you know, cops. And these kids who commit crimes need to be incarcerated. They need to understand they're going to go to jail if they commit crime, because that is a deterrent, unlike what you and your little cronies try to say that jail is not a deterrent. First of all, there's no way to measure that there's no way to know if somebody didn't go out and commit a crime because they were afraid of going to jail. So there's no way for you to measure that. What I can tell you is that before all of these ridiculous, stupid policies got put in place about law enforcement and prosecution, we had a lot less crime. Now we have a lot more crime. So using common sense which I know you don't have a lot of, Bob. Your policies have increased crime drastically. And continuing down this road is going to achieve the same results. Continuing to improve accountability. Yeah, of course. Accountability. With who, Bob? The criminals? Advance equity. Got to throw that in there. Got to get some buzzwords in there. And focus on crime prevention, not just crime response. Yeah, well, you need to focus on crime response right now, Bob, because we have a problem. Bob goes on to talk about his record on public safety. Bob supported sexual assault survivors by leading the coalition that eliminated the shameful rape kid backlog. Yes, this was disgusting. More than 10,000 kits when Bob took office. These kits were located on shelves in evidence rooms across the state when Bob took office. Nobody in law enforcement even knew the size of the backlog. Well, I can tell you as a former law enforcement officer, Bob, we did know that we'd send a rape kit into the state and have to wait months and months for a response. That wasn't our fault. That's your fault. That's the state's fault. That is... This state's lack of compassion, lack of ability to function. This is the state on every level of the government, every organization, every bureaucratic, stupid department that the state consists of, incapable of doing their job in a timely manner. I think anybody that's dealt with the state on any level for anything knows this. So good old Bob, he eliminated the backlog, allowed survivors' voices to be heard. It also reduced the testing time on new sexual assault kits from as much as 14 months down to 45 days and led to dozens of convictions. I wonder, listen to that now, 10,000 kits that they processed led to dozens of convictions. So did Bob really help the victims? 
Did he really give them justice? Did he prosecute those people? If you listen to any of my podcasts during this legislative session, you know that they tried to pass numerous laws to support criminals, to reduce sentencing, to reduce jail time. So as much as Bob wants to say that he supports victims and wants to prosecute criminals, unfortunately, actions speak louder than words, and that's just not the case, Bob. Continuing. Bob formed an organized crime task force to investigate and prosecute organized crime rings that endanger employee safety, damage our businesses and economy, and drive up costs for all Washingtonians. Well, Bob, he just created that thing in February of this year, which to me looks like a desperate move to make some pretty useless task force to say that he's doing something about crime when for the last three years he's allowed stolen vehicles to not be pursued stolen vehicles that were used numerous times all over the state to drive through the fronts of businesses so they could steal burglarize and rob oftentimes by juveniles who aren't prosecuted or dealt with properly He has him and Inslee's policies on shoplifting and theft from stores have prevented security, private security hired by these businesses, prevented them from pursuing the suspects and criminals, prevented them from putting hands on suspects and criminals. So what have you really done to stop the huge amount of shoplifting and retail theft that's going on in the state right now? where these business owners feel like there's nothing they can do. No, Bob, you fought against them. You have not helped them one bit. This organized crime task force, this is a desperate move, Bob. I know in Seattle they had a street crimes unit that dealt with all of this, and because of you and Inslee's policies on vaccines and everything else that forced these officers out, they had to shut that unit down. That was one of the first things they did. <clears throat> Bob and his team won nearly 100 sexually violent predator trials, keeping the worst of the worst sex offenders detained at McNeil Island. He passed two bipartisan bills strengthening Washington's sexually violent predator law. 100 sexually violent predator trials in how many years? Do you know how many sex offenders there are in this state? Go on your county sheriff's office website sometime and take a look at how many sex offenders live around you. There are sex crimes, numerous sex crimes every day. How many of those don't get prosecuted, Bob? Bob created a team in his office that employs innovative DNA techniques to solve sexual assaults and serious cold case crimes. This team has helped law enforcement solve three, three whole cold case homicides and sexual assaults. Three. I mean, I'm glad those ones got solved, but what about all the rest, Bob? There's a lot. Bob wrote and passed laws to combat mass shootings. What laws were those, Bob? The magazine ban? Is that going to stop a mass shooting? It's not. It won't. If somebody wants to commit a mass shooting, they'll just reload. Carry extra mags. If you want to deal with the mass shooting problem, like I've said numerous times, you should deal with the mental health issues that plague our society, that plague people in this state, because that is what leads to mass shootings, not guns. He took the Trump administration to court and won a nationwide victory that blocked the unchecked dissemination of untraceable, undetectable 3D printed guns. 
There's always, you got to throw the Trump card in there, you know. Bob wrote and passed bipartisan laws to strengthen human trafficking laws and protect human trafficking survivors. And if that's the law I'm thinking of, it's the optional, it's the mandatory training for human trafficking for hotel workers, but it's optional for them to actually report it. Worthless. Bob wrote and passed a nationally recognized law increasing the penalties for elder abuse. Oof. Thank God, Bob. Bob led the expansion of the state's two identity ta theft task forces. Well, we already talked about that, didn't we? Bob created a cold case unit. Yeah, yeah, already. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bob created a cold case unit with investigators focused on cases involving missing indigenous people. Yep, so if you're native, they'll look for you a little bit harder. If you're white, forget it. That's equity, folks. That's equity. Hard at work right there. Bob won more than $1 billion to address the fentanyl epidemic in Washington. He fought for more resources from the federal government to combat fentanyl tra traffickers. Yeah, we talked about this too. Good old Bob has allowed laws and lack of prosecution to fuel the fentanyl drug crisis, and now he's going to save the day. He creates the problem, and then he somehow thinks he's going to solve it, but that won't really happen. Bob formed a hate crimes task force. He prosecuted a, a hate crime, one. And he drafted a plan to address rising domestic violent extremism that was called a model for the nation. Domestic violent extremism is BS. Bob. <clears throat> it's a farce. It's a joke. It's a fear tactic. It's fear porn. It's fear mongering. It's a lie. It doesn't exist. I mean, sure, there are some crazies out there, but it is not the problem the Democratic Party has made it out to be. We have a lot of other more serious problems, like gang violence, like rising crime, like border issues. Bob helped increase penalties for repeat DUI offenders. Mm-hmm. There is another crime that goes unpunished quite often. These people are given chance after chance after chance until they go out and do some real damage. Bob wrote and passed a law increasing penalties for violent crimes committed in and around courthouses, improving protection for witnesses, family members, and others. If you think that law was anything other than protecting the workers in the King County Courthouse... You're fooling yourself. He did not do that for anybody but those employees who were being threatened and assaulted daily in Seattle by homeless people, by protesters. He wrote a law to protect them. And they deserve protection, don't get me wrong. They shouldn't have to fear for their safety when they go to work. But that was the reason. It was not for any other reason helping protect witnesses and family members and all that garbage. He doesn't care about that. Bob and his team prosecuted the illegal use of force by police. Here, here's the real public safety message. Wrote an improved model use of force and de-escalation policy adopted by most agencies. What does Bob know about use of force? Have you seen Bob and his little skinny arms, and he's a Bill Gates look-alike. He doesn't know anything about use of force. He doesn't know anything about what it's like to be in a police car dealing with crazy people, armed people, people that want to kill you, drugged out, crazed out, mentally ill. Not a clue. But he'll write the policies about it because he knows. And 
and advocated for more mental health resources for law enforcement. Did you know Washington ranks last in the country in law enforcement personnel per capita? Bob's got that on his own website right here. Fewer than any other state in the nation since 1980. That is a direct result of Jay Inslee and Bob Ferguson. If you want that problem to continue to get worse, vote for Bob. The thing about all this stuff that he talks about in here, about his crime, his big public safety push, it's all BS. It's, it's stuff that isn't going to matter right now on the streets to most people. Most people are victims of assaults, domestic violence, theft of one kind or another, burglaries doesn't mention anything about these crimes that are happening by the hundreds every day. He doesn't care if your property gets stolen. That is a major problem. That is a direct result of the increased drug use in the state. Because these people who are abusing drugs have to go out and steal stuff to sell to buy more drugs. All this talk about rape kits and sex crimes is a big one, it is. But, again, Bob doesn't really want to prosecute those people. Bob wants to pass laws that will reduce sentences and let them out early and give them more opportunities and change what they're called when they're incarcerated so they don't feel bad about being a sex offender. That's where Bob stands on that deal. He wants to hire additional state troopers. He will dedicate these troopers to units targeting auto thefts and child sex predators. He's got a thing about sex crimes. I don't know. Again, sex crimes are a problem, but we have a lot of other problems too. And how are you going to get these troopers to take the job, Bob? State Patrol doesn't pay jack compared to most departments in the state. Not to mention the fact that when you get hired by the State Patrol, you can be moved around just like in the military to any, any location in the state that they need to put you. Not conducive to a family. The wage is not conducive to a family. And the way they're treated by state government is not conducive to a good job. <clears throat> Increase resources for car thefts. You know, they wouldn't even let officers pursue a stolen vehicle until this law got changed by the citizens last month. A cop could see a stolen car go by them and they couldn't do a thing driver would flip them off and take off and the cop could not pursue. Why do you think car theft got so out of hand, Bob? They have to be able to chase these things or they're not going to put a stop to it. I don't know how you think you're going to stop it if you won't let the cops do their job. And not to mention these people that steal cars are also committing a lot of other bad, violent-type crimes quite often. So taking them off the street would be a good thing, but not in Bob's mind. And then he goes on about expanding cold case investigations. A big stuck on that. Wants to create a new hate crimes unit. I mean, th this is not the reality of daily life. You know what I mean? This is not what people are dealing with on a nightly basis. <clears throat> yeah, Bob is a liar. Bob wants to increase community-based policing 
expanding co-response and non-armed responders rooted in de-escalation and behavioral health training. And improved data. Data. They're all about the data. And reporting to improve public trust. Yes, we need mental health responders to work with the police, but that is not a replacement for law enforcement. They cannot respond. You cannot send a mental health professional out to a domestic violence situation alone, because like in other states where they've tried that stupid crap, they've gotten killed, stabbed, shot, murdered. Because those incidents are some of the most dangerous you can go to as a police officer. So, yes, while they are necessary now and should be available to respond with police, that is not a replacement for police. Bob says he wants to combat fentanyl trafficking and increase funding for multi-jurisdictional drug task forces. Where is all that fentanyl coming from, Bob? It's coming from the southern border. And yet, you and Inslee have created a sanctuary state for those people coming across the southern border to come straight to Washington. And they bring their fentanyl and their meth and their marijuana and their cocaine across the border with them and they bring it here because it's a sanctuary state and you won't work with ICE and you won't let law enforcement deal with these people and you want to give them everything they need to survive give them IDs let them vote let them have professional licensed jobs here in the state so they could set up a what looks to be an illegitimate business as a front to sell drugs. Fentanyl is killing more people in this country than anything else. We have to have Narcan everywhere now to revive these people when they overdose on it. But you're inviting these people to our state, Bob. You don't support closing the border or having a legitimate, reasonable border policy. So again, your policies are fueling this crisis that you claim to want to do something about. I just want to take you back to three years ago, the George Floyd deal. Where was Bob when six blocks of Capitol Hill in Seattle got taken over? Where was Bob when all those rioters were burning the city of Seattle down and causing massive amounts of property damage? Did Bob go out and make sure any of those people got prosecuted and thrown in jail for that? Nope. Did he back the police up at all during any of that? Nope. He was silent. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. Did not do his job. Well, where was Bob when people were just trying to make a living during the COVID pandemic? He wasn't on your side. It was him and Inslee against the world, basically. Telling you that if you didn't get vaxxed, you couldn't go to work. And if you lost your job because you didn't get vaxxed, you weren't going to get unemployment either. Oh, but they never forced you to do it. No, it was your choice to be out of work, out of money, homeless, unable to take care of your family and kids. Yeah, they, they didn't force you, though. That was your choice.
Bob says as governor he will continue to pursue common sense gun reforms to save lives and improve community safety. What's he done so far to combat gun violence and mass shootings? He prevented the unchecked dissemination of untraceable and undetectable ghost guns. How do you, do you suppose the gang members aren't able to do that anymore because of Bob? He banned the sale of high-capacity magazines. I'm sure that stopped a whole bunch of mass shootings, Bob. And he held firearms dealers accountable when they broke the law. Because all these criminals are buying their guns at gun stores from firearms dealers, you know. Right? And he defended Washington's universal background check from the gun lobby's legal challenge. Good job, Bob. As governor, Bob will direct the state patrol to establish the first state firearm buyback program. Wow. He will oversee the successful implementation of the state's centralized background check system. Oh, yes. It's not enough to have a the background check we have now. It's going to be a state centralized. How is a firearm buyback program going to keep, hand, keep firearms out of the hands of dangerous individuals? It's not. He will also improve Washington's permit process for firearms and enact waiting periods and other programs that reduce tragedies and are effective in suicide prevention and will support resources for training and implementation of existing laws related to orders of surrender of weapons for domestic violence offenders. So I agree that, in some cases, in a domestic violence situation, a dangerous one, that guns should be taken. Some of those dudes do go out and kill their exes. But what are you going to do to prevent a woman who's pissed off from making something up and getting some guy's guns taken away from him just to... Just to get back at him. And I'm sorry, you can't be taking guns away from everybody because some people want to kill themselves. If people want to kill themselves, they're going to. You should be focusing, again, on mental health. More mental health. We need more open resources for people to use or have access to to get the mental health help that they need. He's going to pursue and arrest at-large offenders with active arrest warrants for violating the terms of their parole. How do you suppose he's going to do that? Like I said, these jails are understaffed. Arrest warrants are issued when they abscond, fail to report, or otherwise violate terms of their parole. In 2020, more than 30,000 warrants were issued for offenders under the supervision of DOC for absconding or failing to report. Too many of these potentially dangerous individuals are falling through the cracks due to insufficient resources. The state has a duty to hold these individuals accountable when they violate the terms of their parole. The Department of Corrections admits that it does not actively pursue all active warrants of offenders who have violated the terms of their supervision. I don't know how Bob is going to do anything about that, to be honest. Unless you've got a task force warrant team going out and actively going after these warrants and not just relying on all the cops in these cities who just happen to come across them. And then unless you're going to increase corrections officers in the jails, it's just not going to happen. They just can't take them. They don't have the staff. Says he's going to hire an estimated 40 new corrections employees in the community response unit that is responsible for pursuing these individuals. 
Well, good, Bob. How about the jails? You going to give them any more money to hire people? Doesn't say anything here about that. Bob is really good at pretending like he cares and talking a bunch of flannel mouth nonsense about all this crime stuff that he's going to work on that he's fought so hard against for the whole time he's been there with Inslee. Bob will improve and expand public access to law enforcement data, 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 including data connected to pursuits, traffic stops, and assaults on officers. Yes, because we have to make sure the public knows how bad the cops are for doing pursuits and traffic stops. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, you can read this for yourself if you go to old Bob's website, but I think you probably know that Bob's full of it, and his actions while he's been in office have spoken for themselves, and unless we want a continuation of Jay Inslee, or even potentially worse than Jay Inslee, I think, you should not vote for Bob. He is not for public safety. He is not for the police. He is not for victims' rights. His actions have spoken louder than his little words now. He fights for criminal rights. Haven't we had enough of this in Washington yet? Haven't people woken up to this you don't have to be a Democrat or a Republican to see how bad it's gotten. The homelessness, the drugs, the crime. All at the hands of these Democrats who are in charge. Who don't think that they have anything to do with what's happening. I don't know who they think created this problem. But they've been in control for a long time. And if they were going to do something about it, they would have by now. They've spent hundreds of millions of tax dollars to try to fix these problems in their own special ways. And it's done absolutely nothing. It's done no good. It's only gotten and continues to get worse continually raising our taxes to pay for all these programs that don't work, defunding our police, defunding our jails, putting judges and prosecutors into place, and sheriffs in some places, King County, where their policies... Their political agenda has been pushed, and you can see the results around you. And if you don't believe that it's worse, or you don't believe that things are that bad, then you are an idiot. You have your head buried in the sand. You don't own a business. You don't know somebody that owns a business. Maybe you're one of the lucky ones who hasn't been accosted, assaulted, robbed, burglarized, had something stolen from you. Or maybe you're just one of those idiots that believes that if somebody stole it from you, they need it more than you do. But I would like to think that the majority of us are over it done with this this has gone on long enough and it needs to stop and this guy sideshow bob he is not the person you want to be running this state
Thanks for listening to Left Coast News. For more, visit leftcoastnews.net. Please subscribe, like, and share to your social media. We appreciate your support.